Now we're going to talk about graphing radical functions. And I want to start with this function for finding the area of a circle that we've used many times. The area of a circle is defined by pi times the square of the radius. Well, this is a quadratic equation. The reason it's quadratic is because the input is a square quantity. Well, if we solve that equation for r, in which case we divide by pi, and then we square root to get rid of the square, we find that we can find the radius by taking the square root of the area divided by pi. Well, this is called a square root function. A square root function usually comes from a quadratic equation that we've solved for the input, like when we talked about inverse relationships. Now, we have another type of line test. We use something called the vertical line test when we wanted to determine if a graph or a relation was a function. Well, now we have something called the horizontal line test that'll tell us if the inverse of a function is also a function. So the first graph is just your general y equals x squared. Well, if I do the horizontal line test and I see that the graph is touched by the horizontal line twice, that means the inverse of this function is not a function. So I'm going to write down here inverse is not a function. And so next to it would be the graph of the inverse, and you can tell it's not a function because the vertical line test does not hold true. Well, what if instead I restrict the domain? So my red graph here is the graph of y equals x squared, except that I'm only graphing where x is greater than or equal to 0. So when I graph its inverse, f inverse of x is the square root of x. So if we take the equation y equals x squared and we solve for x, we get the square root of y is equal to x. And then you flip your x and y, and you know that's the equation of the inverse. So our inverse, you'll notice, is now a function because the vertical line trust holds true, doesn't it? It only hits one point on the graph. Now, we're going to talk about translating the parent graph, y equals the square root of x. The translations are going to work very similarly to the translations on polynomials and quadratic functions that we've talked about in previous units. So if the parent function is y equals the square root of x, if you reflect the graph over the x-axis, reflect is going to be negative square root of x. If you move the graph up or down, it's going to be y is equal to the square root of x plus k. If k is positive, you've moved up. If k is negative, you've moved down. For left and right, however, in previous sections, we've talked about adding or subtracting a number inside a set of parentheses. For the square root function, we're going to add or subtract a number inside the radical. So if it says x minus h, that's going to be to the right, h. And if it says x plus h, it's going to be to the left. The other thing we can do is we can stretch or shrink it. It's stretch. If you multiply the square root function by a number, that's bigger than 1. And we shrink or compress if the number we're multiplied by is between 0 and 1. Now, it doesn't matter if this is a square root function or any higher order polynomial. So if I change this, I shouldn't say higher order polynomial, I should say higher radical. So if I make this the nth root of x, all the same translations hold true. So nothing changes other than I need to be careful about what my root index is before I determine how my graph has been translated. 
In problem one, we want to determine what the graphs of the square root of x minus 2 and the square root of x plus 1 are going to look like compared to the parent function. Well, first of all, let's determine what the parent function looks like. I'm going to make me a little table, so I'll do y equals the square root of x in blue. Now, I'm going to pick some very particular numbers. Remember that you can't take the square root of a negative. So I know if I plug in 0 for x, the square root of 0 is 0. I know the square root of 1 is 1. But now I'm not going to plug in 2 for x. And the reason I'm not going to plug in 2 is because the square root of 2 is a decimal. The next number that I can evenly take the square root of is 4, because the square root of 4 is 2. The next number that I can evenly take the square root of is 9, because the square root of 9 is 3. And I'm going to stop there and go ahead and graph this. So I know it goes through 0, 0. I know it goes through 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. And that's probably good enough for now. This is the parent function of y equals the square root of x. So now, what if I want to graph y is equal to the square root of x minus 2? Well, just by looking at the equation, I can tell you that the graph gets shifted down two units. So why don't I just take those four dots and move them all down two units? So this one goes down two, down two, down two, down two. So here would be the graph of the square root of x minus two. Now let's look at the graph of y equals the square root of x plus 1. That would be the parent function shifted up one unit. So I'm going to take the four dots on the blue graph and move all of them up one unit. So up one, up one, up one, up one. And there's the graph being shifted up one unit. Just to quickly review domain and range, for all three of these graphs, the domain, the x values, are x is greater than or equal to 0, because we can't plug a negative number into a square root. The range, however, is different for each graph. The range of the red graph is y is greater than or equal to negative 2. The range of the blue graph is y is greater than or equal to 0. And the range of the green graph is y is greater than or equal to 1. Remember, range are the output values. Let's do this again. But now I want to look at the graphs of y equals the square root of quantity x plus 4 and y equals the square root of the quantity x minus 1. Notice that these numbers are under the radical. That means that we're going to move them left and right. So y equals the square root of x plus 4 is a shift left 4. So I'm going to take all four of those blue dots from the parent function, and notice that I just drew the same parent function, and I'm going to move them all left four. So there's a dot here, a dot here, uh, one, two, three, four, dot here, one, two, three, four, dot there. I'll do y equals the square root of x minus 1 in green. This is a shift right 1. So I'm going to take all those blue dots and I'm going to move them to the right one. And there's the graph that's been shifted to the right one. Now the domains of these are actually a little bit different, but the range of all the graphs are the same. Even though we shifted the graphs left and right, the range of each of the graphs is y is greater than or equal to 0. The domains are different, though. For the green graph, the domain is x is greater than or equal to 1 because its starting x value is 1, and all the rest of the graph goes to the right from there. The blue graph, its domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. That's the parent function. And the red graph, its domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 4 because it starts at negative 4, and then it goes to the right from there. The last problem we're going to talk about here is what is the graph of y equals negative 1 half the square root of x minus 3 plus 1? 
And on the graph below, I've put the parent function as my dash line. Remember, my parent function goes through the points 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. So let's talk about the translations on this graph. This particular graph will have been reflected over the x-axis. That's what the negative does. The one-half being multiplied in front shrinks or compresses depending on how the book calls it. In this section, they call it shrink, but we had called it compress at another point in time. The minus 3 inside the radical moves the graph to the right 3. And the plus 1 moves the graph up 1. So we're going to take those four dots, and we're going to move all of them to the uh, right 3, we're going to move them up one. We're going to flip them over. And then we're going to kind of compress the graph. We're going to make it uh, a little smushed or, or not, so, uh, not so steep, I guess we could say. So in this picture, I'm showing you in red is the graph of y equals negative one-half square root of x minus 3 plus 1. In blue, however, is the graph without the compressing. So I want you to think about this. The graph of y equals the square root of x. We said goes through 0, 0. It goes through 1, 1. It goes through 4, 2. It goes through 9, 3, which is over here somewhere. So that's the original graph. And then we took the graph and we moved it to the right 3. So it started at 0, that means it got moved over to here. Hey, look where these graphs start. That's moved to the right 3. And then we took that and we added 1 to it. So we went up 1. So here's my right 3, up 1. And then we put a negative in front of it, which means that instead of going up, it came down, and that's my blue line. And then the stretching, or the uh, compressing, look what it does. It takes all the outputs, and, and it multiplies it by one half, and then it adds the one to it. So when we put the one half here, first it takes this output, multiplies it by half, and then adds one to it. So if you look here on the blue graph, the output was 0 and then times a half and then it moves it up one and then times a half and it moves it up one. So now I'll get rid of all these so you can see the graph a little bit nicer again. What I'm mostly concerned with is can you tell me the transformations on the parent function, particularly if you know what the parent function looks like. If you do, then you can draw a decent sketch of what the graph looks like, even if you don't have a graphing calculator on hand.